normally which often struck me in the character of my friend Sherlock Holmes was that although in his methods of thought he was the neatest and most methodical of mankind and although also he affected a certain quiet primness of dress he was nonetheless in his personal habits one of the most untidy men that ever drove a fellow lodger to distraction not that i'm in the least conventional in that respect myself rough and tumble work in afghanistan coming on top of a natural bohemianism of disposition has made me rather more lax than befits a medical man but with me there is a limit and when i find a man who keeps his cigars in the coal scuttle his tobacco in the toe end of a persian slipper and his unanswered correspondence transfixed by a jackknife into the very center of his wooden mantelpiece then i begin to give myself virtuous airs i've always held to that pistol practice should be distinctly an open air pastime and when hames in one of his queer humors would sit in an armchair with his hair trigger and a hundred boxer cartridges and proceed to adorn the opposite wall with a patriotic v r done in bullet box i felt strongly that neither the atmosphere nor the appearance of our room was improved by it our chambers were always full of chemicals and of criminal relics which had a way of wandering into unlikely positions and of turning up in the butter dish or in even less desirable places but his papers were my great crux he had a horror of destroying documents especially those which were connected with his past cases and yet it is only once in every year or two that he would muster energy to docket and arrange them for as i have mentioned somewhere in these incoherent memoirs the outbursts of passionate energy when he performed the remarkable feats with which his name is associated were followed by reactions of lethargy during which he would lie about with his violin and his books hardly moving save from the sofa to the table thus month after month his papers accumulated until every corner of the room was stacked with bundles of manuscript which were on no account to be burned and which could not be put away save by their owner One winter's night as we sat together by the fire I ventured to suggest to him that as he had finished pasting extracts into his commonplace book he might employ the next two hours in making our room a little more habitable he could not deny the justice of my request so with a rather rueful face he went off to his bedroom from which he returned presently pulling a large tin box behind him This he placed in the middle of the floor, and squatting down upon its tool in front of it, he threw back the lid. I could see that it is already a third full of bundles of paper tied up with red tape into separate packages. Music